All right. Um, we just got the recording in the progress notification. Good morning, everyone. Welcome um, to today's presentation. Um, my name is Courtney Block, and I am the Instruction, Reference, and User Engagement Librarian at Indiana University Southeast um, and current chair of the Indiana State Library's Professional Development Committee. I'm going to be hosting for today's session Reader's Advisory, The Art of Finding the Right Book, presented by Laura Jones, who is the Northwest Regional Coordinator of the Indiana State Library. Just a couple of announcements to register for other webinars or other trainings available from the Professional Development Office. Please see the Indiana State Library's events calendar, which can be found um, on their website. For a full list of current in-person training menus, continue uh, to see the continuing education website. Um, this session is about an hour long, so you're gonna get one LEU for this presentation. Um, if you're watching an archived recording of this webinar, instructions on how to obtain your LEU are in the video's description on YouTube, or you can also find those instructions on the Indiana State Library's continuing education site under LEU policies. If you guys have any questions in the chat, please pop them over there. I'll be moderating. And without further ado, I am turning it over now to Laura. Thank you, Courtney, and good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me this morning, bright and early. First, I wanna tell you a little bit about myself. Um, like Courtney said, I'm currently the Northwest Regional Coordinator for the Indiana State Library. Uh, prior to this, I was a school librarian, K to 12. Um, and prior to that, I was a public librarian for a little while. So I've kind of done a little bit of everything in the library world. Um, and in all of my library positions I've had, my favorite part of the job and the one that I find truly enjoyable all the time has been Reader's Advisory. Um, in my opinion, there's nothing like spreading joy to others by leading them to the right book for their preference or taste or mood. Um, so I'm a huge mood reader myself, and I can appreciate even the most off the wall requests from your students and patrons looking for just the right book to spark their interest. So I've put together some resources that I like to use um, to find the books, the most popular books, maybe bestseller books, and um, those hard to find books. So hopefully you'll find some things that are helpful for you today. And my contact information is on here. You can always feel free to email me with questions. Um, I would love to chat if you just want to email and say hi. So um, my contact info will also be shared near the end. And then I shared a link to all the resources that I'll be going over today in the chat. All right, so let's get started about Reader's Advisory. First, I want to just discuss uh, what is Reader's Advisory? Well, um, like I said, I'll be providing my favorite places to go for book information and Reader's Advisory help. Um, some of this might be old information that you've seen and already use as a go-to resource. However, I hope you do find something new um, to help with it in the future. Uh, so Reader's Advisory, by definition, is the process of matching readers with books and books to readers. It's answering questions that have more to do with the patron's leisure reading than their informational needs. Reader's Advisory deals with both fiction and nonfiction titles, and a specific request may require both kinds of materials to meet a certain need. Other types of Reader's Advisory requests you might encounter might include things like determining the name of a novel on which a certain film is based. That happens quite a bit, I'm sure. Um, identifying the author who wrote books featuring a certain character. Who was the, what were those books with such and such character? You remember, get those questions a lot. Um, determining the order of a series. That's a big one. If you have uh, series readers that want to read in order, I'm one of those, of course. Uh, finding novels written about a certain time period or in a particular genre. Finding biographies about a particular individual. So obviously there's lots of other requests, but these are kind of some of the common ones that you might encounter. And then we all probably have some really off the wall stories about um, Reader's Advisory that we could share too. All right, so one of the first places that I like to look to find books um, and for Reader's Advisory help are bestseller lists. And of course there are lots of bestseller lists, but I'm going to talk about four that I tend to use the most. Um, the first one, the New York Times bestseller list. Uh, this of course is available um, online and in print. Um, it's split into paperback and hardcover categories. Um, and then it's also split further into genre categories. So it's easy to navigate um, to find 
help for your patrons. If they just want to read those um, hot books that are um, everybody's reading and talking about, or maybe ones they see on the news, uh, this is a great place to go. Um, along with that is the Publishers Weekly bestsellers list. Uh, Publishers Weekly also divides things up by hardcover, paperback, mass market fiction, um, but then they also have lists by genre. So um, if you have somebody come in and they are getting ready for spooky season, as they say in the book world, um, and they only want to read some thrillers for the next month or so, um, this would be a great place to go. Uh, you could just look at the top thrillers and uh, give them a list of which ones are, are the most popular, or maybe it's February and someone's in the mood for romance. I read romance all year, but anyway, if somebody wants romance in February, you could go to Publishers Weekly. They have a nice top romance bestsellers. Um, you could go there and help them out that way. Um, so these are great places to go if you yourself are not a you know reader in that genre, it's a great help. USA Today, um, best-selling books, they have 150 top selling titles each week. So that's updated weekly. It's a great place to go um, for a mix of genres. And then indie bestsellers, indiebound.org is where you would go um, for, this is based on the sales at all indie independent bookstores nationwide. Um, so this is a great place to go to find maybe some of the books that aren't as widely known because they're not, you know, put out by huge publishers. And this is where I would find a lot of the books that I love to read from um, little known authors that write romance. So I'm a big fan of IndieBound. Um, and then, of course, you can look at um, the websites for your large chain retailers, your Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Books A Million, et cetera. They all have their own bestsellers lists, of course, um, which can usually be found prominently displayed on their websites or at the front of their storefronts and displays. So those are just uh, my favorite places to go for bestseller lists. Now, another one of my go-to places for reader's advisory and finding popular books for patrons are celebrity book clubs. Whether you love them or loathe them, let's face it, when a celebrity stamps their approval on a book, the popularity swells. Uh, I just don't like how they stamp those stickers on the front of the books. That's kind of annoying. I'm sure some of you are with me on that. Um, mar the cover. So celebrity book clubs have grown in recent years. Um, even famous athletes have started book clubs of late. Um, but here are four large scale, well-known celebrity book clubs, clubs that I keep up to date on so I can recommend popular titles. So the first one, and maybe my favorite one, um, and not so much because it's Reese Witherspoon, but it's kind of because of the content, um, is Reese's Book Club. Um, now she has this awesome app that's um, available for download and it has recipes um, that go along with the books. There's like watch parties where you can count down to the new release, all these fun things. And she gives clues and gives away copies and all that good stuff. Um, so Reese's Book Club has 60 picks so far. They've also recently added a young adult category. Um, so they, they release their main pick at the beginning of the month, adult fiction, usually or nonfiction. And then um, later, a little bit later in the month, they release a young adult pick, which I find great because um, I read a lot of young adult and a lot of those are crossovers where adults and young adults alike would love them. Um, so I really appreciate what I really appreciate about Reese's book club is that she doesn't always pick well-known authors that have a few books under their belt. Um, she does a great job of picking debut authors, um, which really, really helps that author get the word out and get their book out there um, for this reason. And the fact that her choices usually almost always line up with my own like reading taste. Um, she's my favorite celebrity book club to go to. So that's Reese's book club. And it used to be, I think it's also referred to as Hello Sunshine book club. So it's one and the same. Um, and then read with Jenna. This is the well-known Today Show book club. Uh, Jenna has 31 picks so far, um, but their website is, uh, is not as, I don't think the book club website's as organized as Reese's. Um, you can get like downloadable lists on Reese's book club, but Jenna's um, picks, picks also sort of similar authors as Reese. Um, she doesn't always pick huge, huge uh, celebrity authors. But um, next, of course, I'm sure everybody's heard of Oprah's Book Club. I feel like it's kind of lost some maybe popularity or steam over the years because it was started um, in 1996 when she had her talk show. Of course, it's been around the longest. Um, she used to select a new book each month and then, you know, talk about the book on an episode of her talk show that was airing at that time. Um, so it had a lot of popularity then. 
Um, there are 91 books in her list so far. So if you have a patron that just loves the Oprah's book picks, uh, you can go to her website and there's a downloadable and printable list that you could get for the patron on there. And then lastly is the Good Morning America Book Club. This one's fairly new, started in 2019. Um, they have 22 titles so far. So they pick like multiple titles each month. It's not just one. Um, and they pick diverse authors quite frequently and they also have a great variety of genres. So this is a great place to go um, for someone who has an eclectic taste maybe or um, really will read anything. Uh, the Good Morning America Book Club is a great place to go to um, steer them to find books. Okay. All right, now Goodreads, I'm sure a lot of you are on Goodreads. Um, I love Goodreads to keep myself organized for reading, but I also love a lot of the reader's advisory tools that they have on Goodreads. Um, it's a great place to assist you with patron questions. They have Listopia, which is um, tons and tons of popular book lists that are on a, to the whole gamut of topics and genres. Um, and they're of course curated by Goodreads members and Goodreads librarians. They also will recommend books based on your reading taste. So this just came up on mine, like you read, We Are Inevitable, I bet you like this book. Um, so that's handy. Um, and they also do the Reader's Choice Awards every year, the Goodreads Choice Awards, uh, where members or Goodreads users can vote on the most popular books for the year in all genres. So that's a fun place to go to look for, perhaps you want the best romance books for the past year. Um, and then this is a great, another great place to go to find books by a certain author. If you want to see all the books a certain author has written, you can go here. And then there are an abundance of giveaways on Goodreads, which I talk about in my other um, presentation that I do about free books. Um, so I wanna show you Goodreads and just kind of show you where some of these things are. So let me flop over here to Goodreads. Okay, so this is my Goodreads. Um, so, you know, I like it because I can keep track of what I'm reading. I can do a reading challenge, all that good stuff. But up here at the top, you can go to browse. Um, and here's kind of some of those things I was talking about. You can look at the choice awards, um, the giveaways, of course, you can sort those by all manner of topics. And those are great for trying your luck at free books. Um, the lists, I'm gonna show you the lists are great. So here is the Listopia. You can make your own lists um, if you like, and um, or you can just search featured lists, lists that are recently updated, lists your friends have voted on, all kinds of fun stuff. And then of course your popular lists like the best young adult books ever. So that has 12,000 books in it. So that'll keep you busy for a while. But these are great to go to, um, you know, for those people that really like to read a lot of books about the same thing or the same author that kind of thing. And then of course, there's the community aspect of Goodreads, which you can talk to other people about the books and all that good stuff. So that's Goodreads. Pop back over here. Okay, Library Reads. So librareads.org, I'm gonna take you to the website in a moment and show you all the good stuff that's located there. Um, but this was founded by 10 publishing groups and they're like large publishers, you got Hatchet, HarperCollins, Macmillan, Other Press, Penguin, Quirkus, Random House, Simon & Schuster, Orkman, and W.W. Norton. So 10 pretty large publishers kind of founded this organization. Um, and what this is, is the top 10 books published each month that library staff across the country love. So this is put together by um, the voting and the input from library staff across the country. So that's, that's one of the things I love the most because the library staff's out there you know, reading the books, uh, seeing what people are reading, all that stuff, seeing what's being checked out. Um, so they have an amazing resources page for Reader's Advisory, um, which I'm gonna show you in just a moment. Uh, it includes free printable materials to help promote the books at your library. So each month when they put out the list, they also uh, put out all these full color printable uh, promotional materials, and you can also use them on your social media, web page, all that good stuff. Um, so the goal of Goodreads is to help connect readers, or not Goodreads, library reads, connect readers to as many books as possible while drawing upon the incredible power that public library staff has in helping to build word of mouth for new books and the important role that libraries play in creating audiences 
for all kinds of authors. So rather than picking the best of anything, Library Reads represents collective favorites. Um, there are no judges or juries and participation is open to everyone who works in a public library, um, whether that be senior staff or a brand new arrival um, in any area of the library. So you can have your um, collection development uh, vote on this. You can have your circulation staff, um, your maintenance, your, your uh, anybody, anybody that works in the library. So that's awesome too. Um, it's in, designed to be inclusive and diverse, um, or diverse representing a broad range of reading tastes and showcasing a variety of new titles, buzzed about debuts, genre favorites, best-selling authors, and then lesser known mid-list titles that public library staff are raving about. All right, so I'm gonna show you the website. And what they do is each month they announce the list by email and website. And then they ask that you vote on the list and then they announce the winners. Um, so they have a place here for public libraries under participate. Um, for library staff or for publishers, they have marketing materials here and resources. I wanna show you the marketing. So every month they have these lovely downloads, bookmarks, banners um, that show the list each month. So you can see the 10 books here. It's a PDF. And then they also have these banners you can put on your website. And then for library staff, they have, of course, uh, voting reminders, how to, how, to, how to be involved in this. Um, so it's a great way to get your library staff uh, involved in Reader's Advisory a little more and kind of keep up to date on what titles are being um, voted on and recommended. So your voting deadlines, all of that important information is included here. And then resources has a lot of links, um, partner and publisher links. There's a YouTube channel. Um, you can go back and look at the previous uh, library reads lists, all that good stuff. And then they have a master printable list and a hall of fame. Everybody loves a hall of fame. So that's library reads. I love library reads. All right, next. Next, I'm gonna talk to you about some book review publications that I uh, really like. One of my very favorites is BookPage. And some of you might have these in your public libraries, um, which you give out to patrons. Um, BookPage is available in print and online. Um, they have library subscriptions that you can uh, purchase and then provide to your patrons. They have a variety of reviews in a whole bunch of different genres. Um, it sort of reads like a bookish magazine um, for the general pop population rather than a subscription for librarians and booksellers. Um, so if you've seen the book page before, um, when you open it up, there's kind of like a spread with like the hot, hot titles, or they might have like a spread about like cookbooks, or um, this is the picture shown here is holiday catalog. So they'll always have like a two page spread of like gift books, um, you know, gift books for kids, gift books for adults. So it really is a nice um, magazine. I love going to my public library and, and picking one up. It's so exciting. I love the book page and their website has um, giveaways and a lot more resources on it as well, more than the magazine itself. And then Publishers Weekly, I kind of talked about that a little bit when I talked about the bestsellers list, um, but Publishers Weekly has um, a lot of great book reviews. You can sort by uh, genre, you can sort by, um, you know, hot topics. Um, so Publishers Weekly is a great place to get um, very uh, recent book reviews. And then Booklist, uh, this is through ALA, of course. They have the physical magazine that you can get or um, online subscription is also available for purchase. Booklist uh, reads though more for library staff. Um, it's a lot different than book page in that it's not meant really for your library patrons to enjoy as like a magazine. It's more for your library staff collection development, um, you know, those making decisions on what books to get. Um, but it is a great publication and a great place to go for book reviews. And then Kirkus. Um, Kirkus has an Indiana connection. So uh, one of the co-owners is Herbert Simon and Herbert Simon is the owner of the Indiana Pacers and the chairman emeritus of the shopping mall developer um, Simon Property Group in Indiana. Um, so as because of that, when I was a school librarian, um, I used to get Kirkus for free and I believe they give all public libraries and school libraries a free subscription. 
to Kirkus, all of those in Indiana. So most of you probably received this already, um, but Kirkus is meant for libraries, of course, and it's just chock full of reviews um, sorted by um, popular fiction, uh, children's, and then indie publishing. So um, Kirkus is a great place to go to find upcoming titles and titles for your patrons. And then lastly, on this section, I will mention library journal and school library journal. These of course are written with libraries in mind, your library journal for public libraries, um, and then your school library journal for those um, children's and school library. Um, I review books for both of these, um, fiction in both. So I'm a big fan of these and the way they um, give their reviews, um, you know, non-biased reviews, just straight what it's about and who would like it and why. So um, these are great for librarians, whether public or school. And then they have, of course, articles that are um, interesting to read as well in the library realm. Okay, and then publishers newsletters. Now this is a, this is a place that is um, kind of a, I have a love hate relationship with because I've signed up for a ton of them and I get a lot of emails, but I always do check the emails because of the uh, giveaways and things like that, that they have in their newsletter, but publisher newsletters are, are a wonderful way to keep up to date on what books are coming out, what books are popular. Um, you know, they'll often send emails about which one of their books are bestsellers or um, which books to create buzz with your patrons. So, um, a great place to go to get publisher newsletters um, and kind of see signups for all of them in one place is Early Word. Um, Early Word, the publisher librarian connection. This website is um, a friend um, to all library staff. So I would really suggest checking this website out and I'm gonna show you it in a moment. Um, but Early Word's a place for librarians to connect with publishers, hear about upcoming galleys and book announcements. Um, they've compiled a list of publisher contacts for library marketing, and then they further divide the list into adult and children's. So it's a great place to go to find a contact at the publishing house for requesting a title um, or requesting some um, material for a certain book or maybe even an author to, to speak to your organization. Um, they also have all the links to the publisher's newsletter signups, which um, allows you to stay informed of upcoming releases and highly anticipated books. Um, the example shown on the screen here to the left um, is just kind of their homepage. And then over to the right, I show you an example of the listing for Macmillan. So you can see there, um, you can see all their handles for social media and then um, how to sign up for their e-newsletter. There's a link to go right to the site and sign up. And then if there's a Macmillan title that you really want to get early um, and check out, you can email one of the contacts there in library marketing. And let me tell you, they love librarians and what librarians do. So um, they're always um, great about sending you titles if you ask and say, please. Um, so I wanna show you this website. Let me get over to it here. There we go. Okay, so early word. Um, you can see they have galley chats on their social media. So this is where they talk about upcoming books. Um, so they have an adult one uh, once a month and then they have a young adult middle grade chat once a month. And then over here, publisher contacts, these are the lists I was talking about. So if you work with just children's um, and you wanna focus on that, you can go to the library marketing children's and you can of course sort by whatever publisher, but as you can see, they have like even the the most um, small publishing houses listed here. Um, but like, let's say you want a book from Flatiron, you can go here, Flatiron or Wednesday Books. And if you click, it'll take you right to their website. Um, but many of them have a specific page for teachers and librarians. You can see HarperCollins has one here. Um, and then if they have a newsletter sign up, they'll either have a list or a link here to sign up directly to the newspaper or they'll link to their websites. So you can sign up for the newsletter. So this is a great place for a, an abundance of information with publishers. So, and like I said, librarians and publishers, publishers love librarians and they want to help you help them promote their books, of course. So early word, I would highly suggest checking that out. And then one other thing I'll mention while on here is they also have these most anticipated articles from various places. You can see they linked a book page, Book Riot, Barnes and Noble, 
they link to all these places where you can see um, upcoming books, which is helpful for Reader's Advisory. Okay, and then series help. This is always a big one. Um, this is a great website, KDL, what's next? The, um, and I'll go and show you this website in just a moment, but it's a free database that was started and managed by Kent District Library, allows you to search all through series fiction. And it also gives you a printer friendly book list option for printing out a list of series. Um, so this is great for maybe your mystery uh, patron that wants all those books in, in a row. Maybe she wants the whole Janet Ivanovich series and she wants them in order and she wants to know what's the, what's the seventh book, um, which one comes next. So this is a great place to go. Or if you're in the school, oftentimes I would have a kid come in and want the next book in a, you know, the fantasy series, uh, which is the next book. So um, it's a great place to go for quick help with that. Um, another place you can go for series help again is Goodreads. We talked about that. Um, you can look for, um, you can search for the book and then if it's in a series, you can click on the link for that series and it'll list all the books in that series. And then of course, Google, you can, you can check Google if, uh, if all else fails. Um, but I wanna show you this KDL What's Next website. It's great. I used this all the time in the school. I had it bookmarked on my circulation computer. I would train my um, kids to use it because it's such a great resource and it's free. Um, so here it is, uh, you can look search for a book by author, last name, first name. You can look up a series um, or a book title. So let's do a little dog man. You either love it or hate it, right? So you have two authors. So we're gonna choose Dave Pilkey, Adventures of Dog Man. And then it of course gives you a whole list. And then if you wanna go back and search by that series name, you can do that. Um, so it's wonderful um, for finding maybe the most obscure uh, books. If somebody brings you in a book and says, I really wanna know what's next or I want the next book. So I would highly suggest bookmarking this on your circulation computers, telling your um, circulation staff about it for series help. Okay. And then booksellers, um, I also like to look at their websites. Um, I really use uh, Amazon quite a bit because I look at like what's coming soon. And um, when you look up a book on there, of course, it kind of says like people that like this book also like this um, or people that purchase this book also purchase the following. So it's a great place to look for um, read alikes of a certain book, um, similar tastes to that book. Um, and then they have their um, lists, of course, by, um, you know, lists by various genres and things. So that's a great way to find uh, genre lists and suggestions. Um, independent bookstores, um, one-stop shop for all the independent bookstores, the indie um, stores is bookshop.org. Um, so this is a great way to um, kind of support the indie bookstores. So if you're looking for a book, instead of going to Amazon and, and uh, purchasing it, you can go to bookshop.org and find it and it'll get sent to you from an indie bookstore. Um, if you want to support indie bookstores, but they also have quite a bit of great readers advisory lists and information on their website um, for indie publishing. And then um, another place I also keep um, abreast of their titles is the book of the month club. Um, so book of the month is, um, is a great uh, book subscription service. At least I think it's pretty great. Um, they pick five books each month and usually, well, always there are five different genres. Um, but they choose um, a variety of uh, genres and um, kind of diverse titles. They choose, um, they do a good job of choosing debut authors, um, but each month they choose five books. And then if you subscribe to this service, you'll get notified, like here's the five books and you can choose a book to be sent to you that month. Um, and if you don't like any of their titles, you can skip the month. Um, another thing they do is they'll have add-on titles, which are kind of like runners up, um, you know, like this wasn't chosen as one of the five, but it's one we recommend. So they'll have like three or four add-ons each month that you can also add to your box. Um, but book of the month, like when you first sign up, you can pay $5 for your first hardcover book. And a lot of people like them because they have like the little logo on the side. Um, but after that month, um, it's $14.99 a month for your hardcover book. So it's, um, a nice, uh, it's a nice subscription service or gift you could get 
somebody, but what I like about it is they're picking the um, popular books. So if you have somebody that's just willing to read anything um, and just wants a, a good book to read, you could choose one or give them this. Well, here's five books that were chosen for this book of the month. Um, I'm sure you'll, you know, enjoy one of these. So I often find um, great titles this way. And my TBR, my to be read list just grows and grows every time they release the list. So book of the month is another great place to go. And if anyone's interested, I do have a referral code for book of the month if you'd like the $5 uh, first month. So that's the booksellers. And then social media, we all either uh, love or hate social media, right? <laughs> it's, it's good and bad. Um, but bookstagram is kind of like um, a place I love to go. So Bookstagram is this lovely little world on Instagram that's just all about books, authors, publishers, illustrators, all of the book, bookish things. Um, it's a great place to stay up to date on forthcoming books and bestsellers that your patrons will want. Um, many bookstagrammers like myself are sent books by publishers that feature in their posts, um, especially early copies of books and forthcoming titles. Um, so that's a great way to know like what books are creating buzz and kind of the highly anticipated books from all the different publishers and then various genres. Um, so I'm going to show you kind of what it looks like um, and then how to get to get through all the, you know, pictures and books or Instagram stuff and get down to the good stuff, which I consider to be books. All right. So here is what it looks like. Um, so books, this is, this is mine. So it's just, you know, I post what I'm reading or um, when I get a book to feature from a publisher, I post it and there's a book of the month. So you can see kind of what that looks like. Um, but if you want to look on Instagram and bypass all the stuff, you can um, just look up bookstagram as your hashtag. And you can see there's quite a bit of posts. So there's all kinds of um, bookstagram challenges that people do with stacks of books and all of that. But this is a great place to go when you want to look for forthcoming books. And this, of course, um, here's one that everybody's buzzing about right now, the new Sally Rooney book. Um, so you'll find some weird stuff on here, of course, like all social media, but um, there are some great um, book, book um, resources on here. And it's a great way to stay uh, up to date on new books that are coming out. So you can follow the hashtag bookstagram. Um, and if you have your own um, Instagram for your library, um, you can of course join in the fun and uh, make your own post with um, you know, displays at your library or your new books or maybe um, different uh, themes that you're doing for the month or things like that. So it's a great way to stay involved and um, up to date on social media. Okay. And then if all else fails, in the words of my brother, it's worth the Google. He likes to use Google and say that about the Google. So um, as librarians, I think we are kind of the original uh, and superior, I might say, uh, search engines, right? We don't, we don't need Google, but eh, sometimes you do need to resort to a good old fashioned Google search. Um, I know I did a lot of times for expediency because when kids would come into my office in the school library um, and you have all the class in there and I didn't have a, an assistant, so you know, it was just me and them and they want this, the next book in this series or another book like this one. Well, um, I didn't have time to go through all the, the ropes right then. So I would pull up Google and just type in things like read alikes for dog man or read alikes for Flora and Ulysses. Um, and then the results would come back and give me some great options for where to steer them for their next book. Um, but the cool thing is many times when I did that in Google, what would come back is a Goodreads uh, list that someone had already curated, um, you know, for read alikes for Dogman. And then I could see some more um, graphic novelish books that were similar to the silliness of Dogman uh, that the kids love. So that was a great place to go for me to find them quickly. So Google is, is, is great at times. Um, and then if it doesn't work, um, Google doesn't always work, of course, if you're looking for a very obscure or rare uh, book or title, um, but in some cases when there's little time to devote to that, it's a great option. Or another time I've used it is when someone comes in, they're like, you know that book that, that so-and-so read? And it's like, it's about a boy who goes to, you know, like he goes to this other country and then 
then like he finds his dad, you know, they give you some like really obscure, like thing. And you can go to Google and be like, book about boy who goes to Argentina and finds his dad. And then oh, look, look, it comes up. So that's another amazing way uh, that I use, that I've used it in the past. And sometimes I'm like, there's no way I'm going to find this book, but Hey, sometimes you find it win-win. So Google is my, my last resource. All right. So now I kind of want to show you or talk to you about um, what, what you're reading, because this is all about books. And uh, those are, like I said, some of my favorite places to keep up to date on bestsellers and reader's advisory, but that was a lot of information. So I want to allow a few minutes for a chance at fun participation. Um, so if anyone wants to care or wants to share what they're reading and enjoying at the moment, or you have any must reads that we can pass along to our patrons, um, feel free to put some of those must have titles in the chat so we can check them out. Um, I can share mine to start. I'm reading or listening to The Turnout by Megan Abbott. And it's about twin ballet dancers. And it's very dark, but also like it's a great gritty family story. It's really good. There's some sort of like suspense happening in the background. So, and then I'm just about to start The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood, which I'm super excited about. So feel free to put those in the chat or raise your hand. And I wanna see kind of some of the ones that are coming on here. All right, we have 112263, uh, The Book Thief, Razor Blade Tears, very violent, but so darn good. <laughs> I like that. Um, TJ Clune's newest read. Oh, and Laura, um, while people are maybe thinking about their favorite reads, we had a question a few minutes back <laughs> um, from Deborah who asked about fantastic fiction. Um, if you use it and if you have any pros and cons about it. I actually haven't used fantastic fiction. So maybe I'm just a stickler for going to the same places. But now that you mentioned that, Deborah, I'm going to check it out. So thank you for telling me about it. Do you want to tell us, um, do you have a pro or con about fantastic fiction that you can share? Let's see what she thinks about it. I'll have to check it out. Okay, and then let's see if Under the Whispering Door was the T.J. Klune book. Vespertine by Margaret Rogerson comes out October 2nd and is spooky. All right, perfect timing. Okay, and Karen says they use it. They use fantastic fiction at their library and it's great for checking on series. Good to know. And then another book is The Color of Air. So fantastic fiction, Deborah says, has nice lists of series in order and sometimes British titles. Awesome. I've got it written down so I can go familiarize myself with it. Thank you. Another book or two coming in, Small Favors by Erin Craig and Yes to Small. Oh, another person seconds that, Small Favors. Well, there goes another book on my TBR. <laughs> so these, uh, the chat is going to be copied and sent out when we send the recording of the presentation. Um, along with the resource list. So you'll have all the links and information mentioned today. And then also you'll have this lovely list of books recommended by the attendees today. All right, so I'm gonna do, um, if you're interested in finding book reviews or finding me to contact me, um, I have a book review blog, librarianlaura.com. Of course, Goodreads I showed you in Bookstagram. Um, I do have some book talks on YouTube and Twitter is just kind of like there. I don't really actively go there, but my book reviews kind of post there. Um, I find Twitter to be kind of a scary place, so I don't use it as much. Um, and then we can have some time if you guys have any, any questions you want to ask. Um, but if you do want to email me, that's fine too. My email's here uh, and you can contact me through my website and social media too, if you'd like. And I'm going to put that resource list in the chat again. Looks like we got some more um, manga and graphic novels coming in. Great. Great titles. Spooky Reads, The Final Girl Support Group. I just listened to that. That was a wild one. <laughs> oh, yes. Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. Great choice. All right, so I'll be quiet now, and then if we have any questions, feel free to ask those.
Thanks, Laura. Yeah, just while people might be thinking of questions, um, just a reminder to, to pop those in the chat. Um, questions or comments that you have even. I love seeing uh, the spooky recommendations that are coming out. <laughs> like you said, it's perfect timing. I'm wondering, uh, since we're we're all sort of thinking about this, if you have noticed any um, any resources that maybe are better for people who love classics. Um, those were always some questions I got every now and then with, that maybe seemed to be a little more, um, it took a little more time maybe to dig into. Yeah, I don't necessarily have any good ones for classics just because I've kind of been out of the uh, public library for quite a bit now, but um, I wonder if any of the attendees have any they would be willing to share. Some of you on the front lines in the libraries. Um, we've got another question about resources specifically for diverse books and readers. Okay, um, that's a good question. And I would say, I would probably say Goodreads um, because one, they have so many lists that you can get, but also if you look up like a certain book, um, let's just do like, just do one of the ones we just heard about. So if you look up a certain book on Goodreads, it'll tell you um, over here the genres. And um, so if you want to look up, you know, LGBTQ book or a certain fantasy book or paranormal, you can click into these sub genres and it'll give you um, other books. So that's a good way to find diverse fiction. Um, They've got it. Sorry, we've got a comment about someone who uses Novelist um, for Reader's Advisory. I, I love Novelist. I don't know if maybe if you have any thoughts on that. I've never had access to Novelist. That's, I know that's wild because I do so much reading stuff, but I've just like never had access to it. So I would like to have access to that, but I don't. <laughs> It's funny because I, my university library doesn't have um, their own subscription. So sometimes when I have students, you know, that are looking for some, some fiction or reading, I'll just hop onto my public library <laughs> and log in and use it. Um, so that's how I, how I get around it. Somebody else said that they love Book Riot for LGBTQ reads. Yes, Book Riot's a great place. Um, I mentioned that in my other presentation about free books because of uh, the go giveaways and contests on Book Riot. But yeah, it's a great website for Reader's Advisory as well. Look at all these great titles coming in oh. through the chat. <laughs> and uh, as people are still thinking about any sort of questions or comments, I'm gonna put the LEU link in the chat just for you to, to grab if you'd like. Grab now or grab it later, either way. Yes, Book Riot. Chris says they send a lot of emails, that's for sure. Maybe make a folder where they just kind of go to and you can view them later. <laughs> I'm curious out there if anybody else like makes their own. I I love like following people. I just hopped on Laura and followed you. Um, and I'm curious if anybody who's listening also maybe makes their own like, you know, book book videos. I don't know. That's been like a thing in the past like couple of years or if they have um, a place where they like maybe a blog, let us know. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I know TikTok is like a place that's becoming um, book talk and I'm not on there yet because I don't know. I'm just kind of like an old dinosaur when it comes to social media. I get familiar with one and I just kind of stay there. So you probably won't find me on TikTok, but there are a lot of book, book Instagrammers and book influencers on there and that it, they do some clever stuff. So yeah, if you have a Instagram or bookstagram or blog, yeah, please put that in the chat. I'd love to check it out. 
I always love going, uh, whenever I hop over to my public libraries, the book page, I just love it. It's just so, sometimes I'll even just, I'll go in there and just grab it. And while I'm there, just start looking for stuff and yeah. it's such a nice publication. Yes. It's very pleasing. I love the way it's put together. Yeah. <laughs> Jess tells us book talk is great because it's visual and quick, but I, I'm with you also. I'm not brave enough to, I'm not brave enough to do it myself either, but as a viewer, you know, it's great. Oh, somebody else has a friend that reviews books uh, on YouTube uh, on, at Miss Reader. Awesome. That's good. So I'm going to write that down. And someone else here, a recent grad from the MLIS. Well, congratulations and welcome. <laughs> Had to create a blog and a few videos, but haven't maintained it. Yeah, I totally understand that. That's funny. That's how I kind of got into book reviewing originally as I had to create one for library school way back in uh, maybe like 2005. And uh, I let it sit for a long time. And then when I realized I was doing book reviews everywhere, I was like, I should probably get that blog going. So I kind of got it going and then eventually switched it off of that into WordPress. But thank goodness for learning that library school because I didn't have the faintest clue how to start a blog. So it's funny you mentioned that. <laughs> Right. And that's another great example or, of why you might want to follow other people. Like if you're thinking about doing something yourself, like give Laura a follow, give other folks a follow and see what they're doing, get some inspiration, get some ideas um, to, to start your own because we're all in, we're all unique readers. Um, and so more perspectives are certainly wonderful. I also wanted to, while people might still be thinking in, in the few minutes that we still have here together, another strategy that I've used sometimes, and I'm curious about your thoughts on this, Laura, is that sometimes if I am completely stumped and Google is not helping and I'm just like, I don't, I don't know, I don't have a ton of time to dig into this, I will throw the uh, question out to the listserv. Yes, <laughs> very good. I'm a big fan of that. And I think probably too, because I work at the state library, so <laughs> the listservs, but that is an awesome way because what better way to look for an answer than like this um, hive mind that, you know, is all about books and reading and libraries. So I love when those come out on the listserv. I'm always like, do I know that? No, but you get those people that remember like specific minute details about books. And then when it comes out on the listserv, they just know like, oh, I know that book. That's wonderful. I love that. <laughs> Yeah, and I will um, put a link to the Indiana, um, yeah, the list for the listservs, but, and I always love it too, because I feel like as librarians, we love a challenge. We love like a book challenge. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> can't help those that come in and say that the cover is blue, but I can't remember what it was about. It's like, okay, well, you know, <laughs> need just a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. Although that would be kind of an interesting, like a uh, video to watch, like which librarian can get it, you know, the quickest, like I would watch that. <laughs> Well, I think um, we're probably going to need to wrap up because our next session starts right away. So if you guys are um, hopefully going to come to the next uh, session today for the DIY conference, um, and if you cannot make it, we'll of course be sending the um, recordings out after for all of our sessions. So thank you guys. And um, if anybody has any questions or comments or anything, feel free to email me. I love when people email me and talk books. Um, that would be wonderful. So We'd love to hear from you. <laughs> Thank you, Courtney. Thank you, Laura. Yeah, thanks everyone for coming. And Lisa, you go ahead and stop that recording.